We all know that adding power almost guarantees a faster car in a straight line. But what if I told you there's an easier way to make your car faster, not only in a straight line, but everywhere. And here's the kick. You can usually do it for free. Weight reduction. So today I'm going to be talking about weight reduction and everything you need to consider when you're trying to lose some weight. Now the benefits of having a lightweight car is just common sense. And the main goal of weight reduction is to achieve a better power to weight ratio. Because a lighter car is almost always better in every discipline. A car that's lighter accelerates faster because there's less weight to move. It stops better because there's less weight to stop. And it obviously corners better because there's less weight swinging around that corner. Cool, let's jump in the car, rip out the back seat, and we're good, right? Weight reduction. Yes, that does reduce weight to a certain degree, but it's not as simple as just removing or cutting out a bunch of stuff, gutting out your interior if you're building a competitive race car. And if you're not building a competitive race car, why are you gutting out your interior? You see what I mean? There's a lot more to consider to achieve a balanced, lightweight car that performs and handles the way it should. Let me explain. First off, your car's weight can be divided into two main categories, sprung and unsprung weight. Sprung weight is everything that's supported by your suspension. That includes your engine, your transmission, the chassis, the interior, the seats, and when you're driving your car, you and your bad. Now unsprung weight is everything that's not supported by your suspension. It's on the other side of it, which are your wheels, tires, rotors, calipers, and all that stuff. The more unsprung weight you have, like heavy wheels and tires, the more of the small bumps and imperfections your tires will absorb. This makes the ride nice and smooth on the road, giving you those VIP feels. But that also means your suspension needs to work harder to keep those heavy wheels and tires in contact with the road. Let's say you're going over a big bump on the road. The car with a heavier unsprung weight might overwhelm the suspension and lose contact with the road. But the lighter setup gets immediately pushed down, keeping the tires in contact with the road. It's also easier to turn and change directions when you have less unsprung weight. Overall, it means a better handling and more precise steering when you have less unsprung weight. But less unsprung weight also means more of those vibrations and imperfections will transfer to the cabin, making the ride a bit harsher. Small trade-off if you ask me for the massive gains in traction and handling. There's also less torque being wasted on spinning these heavy wheels and tires which means better acceleration and braking. Sprung weight on the other hand is what's pushing the wheels and tires down to the road. That's why you always want the highest ratio of sprung to unsprung weight. Now gutting out your interior, lightweight racing seats, carbon fiber all over the place. And then you throw on a heavy set of wheels and tires because they look good. Your car might be lighter overall but your sprung to unsprung weight might be a little bit lower now which means you might have backtracked a little bit on the performance and handling part. That's why it's so important to lose unsprung weight like lighter wheels and tires to gain the most performance. The next thing you want to consider is weight distribution. That's basically how much of your car's weight is on each axle. And typically where your engine and drive axle are sort of determine where your stock weight distribution is going to be. For example, the Golf GTI is a front engine front wheel drive car with a 60 to 40 front to back weight distribution. The Ford Mustang is a front engine rear wheel drive car with 53 to 47 weight distribution. The Porsche 911 is a rear engine rear wheel drive car with a 37 to 63 weight distribution. But what is the optimal weight distribution? Is 50-50 the glorious weight distribution everyone should chase? Not really, it depends on two things, the car and what it's being built for, so the purpose. Now as for the car, a general rule of thumb is to keep more weight on the drive axle to get the best acceleration. And that's why the Golf GTI drives and handles so well, even in stock form. Now the purpose of the build can change everything. You see the weight distributions we just talked about are only static weight distributions. A moving car experiences something called the weight transfer. When the car starts accelerating, the center of gravity moves backwards, just like the cups and trash in your messy car. Now a car with a static weight distribution of 50-50 is more like 40-60. When you brake, the center of gravity, once again, follows the trash in your car and moves forward. Now that same car has a 60-40 weight distribution. When you're going through a left turn, weight transfers to the right. And when you're going through a right turn, weight transfers to the left and depending on the type of racing that you're going to do your car is going to experience different types of weight transfer for example if you're building a front engine rear wheel drive car for time attack let's say you probably want something around 45 to 55 
front to back weight distribution to get the best dynamic weight distribution while accelerating, braking, and cornering. For drift, the weight transfer is a huge deal and it's all over the place. That's why most drift cars are hovering around the 50-50 weight distribution. This makes the car more predictable and easier to control. The car is more balanced now. That's why you see so many Formula drift cars that have rear mounted radiators, dry sumps, batteries to balance the weight of the heavy engine and transmission up front and get as close as possible to the 50-50 weight distribution. Weight distribution is so important in how a car performs that most race teams actually aim to get the car lighter than what's allowed in their class. That way they get to go back and add weight. That's right, add weight to the car. But they would put it in places that would balance out the car perfectly. So there's more to weight reduction than just weight reduction. Corner balancing, weight transfer, weight distribution, sprung versus unsprung weight. All of these affect your car's overall performance through cornering, acceleration, and braking. But at the end of the day, if all you care about is going fast in a straight line, it's all about your power to weight ratio. Because power to weight ratio is exactly why the fastest vehicle in my garage has the least amount of power. That's it for this video. Hope you learned something new from it and I don't sound too weird from the inside of this helmet. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And thanks for watching.